In this video, I'm gonna dive into some of our favorite filmmaking gear that has brought us more efficiency, speed, and just made us better filmmakers in general. Let's kick this one off with some Aperture products. I'm talking about the Aperture 600D, I'm talking about the Amarin F22 light mats, and any other smaller point source lights like the 200X. Those lights have been crucial to our productions and also the speed of our productions. So let's kind of branch off into these different lights individually. Speaking specifically of the Aperture 600D, I remember a time where I was setting up three lights on one stand just to get enough power to fill in a specific shot that I was trying to go for. Now just being able to put one 600 watt light on a stand is very beneficial to our specific needs on set. We mainly focus on interview setups, more run and gun, B-roll documentary style filmmaking. So having an Aperture 600D in our kit has given us more than enough power and wattage on most of our projects. Another light from the Aperture family that we hold very near and dear to our hearts is the Ameren F22 light mat. And has been one of our most used products in our kit. Reason being is it's pretty easy to set up it's a 200 watt LED light mat and for the most part, just having it with the basic two stop diffusion on it has given us some really stellar looks. We actually did a travel job recently and we used the Ameren F22 as our main key light and it was a nice little travel kit. So that's something to keep in mind as well. If you're doing a lot of travel jobs, you can literally roll these mats up into a Pelican case or a small duffel bag. We actually have a early review on this light. I'll put the link in the description down below that way you guys can check that out. Another piece of gear that we have used on quite a bit of our recent projects is Soonfo. I may be butchering the name, but it's, I believe it's called Soonfo Boom Arm. It's essentially a extendable boom arm. It's made out of aluminum and it has a junior pin on the end. It also has a loop on the opposite side so you can hang a carabiner with a sandbag. So we use this quite a bit with our Ameren F22 because the Ameren F22 doesn't have very much weight to it. So if you have an Ameren F22, then definitely consider buying one of these extendable boom arms. We've never had any issues or it bending in any kind of way. And like I said, we've used these boom arms with our Ameren F22 quite a bit, if not every time we use our Ameren F22. This boom arm has some pretty good reach. This gives you the right amount of room um, and extra bit of length if you need to get that nice wide shot. Another thing I also like on the extendable boom arm is that it has these crank handles. So they're like really long extendable handles. And so what I use that for is cable management. If I feel like it's all, all the way tight, you can pull it away from the boom arm, but you can essentially angle it wherever you want. So I usually point it up so I can hang my cable over it and it tidies up the cables pretty nicely. Okay, moving away from lighting gear and moving into production carts. I also remember a time where my wife and I were doing this gig and we were hauling stuff like one by one. We didn't have any kind of carts. So I definitely remember the first time I bought my first Rockville production cart. It was a thing of beauty. I was able to transport gear with ease. I didn't have to take multiple trips. You have the Pro-Aim or the innovative carts. You can mount different accessories like a monitor, your camera. You can literally mount your camera on it as a tripod. It's a great place to build out cameras. It's a great place to store all of your gear. Any kind of cart that will allow you to transport your gear is gonna save you a ton of time. And for us, it's made our jobs a whole lot easier. Okay, next up on the list is something that quite a bit of you creatives out there already have, but it's a Pelican case. They're indestructible, they're waterproof, watertight, water sealed. They hold a, quite a bit of equipment and they secure your expensive, valuable equipment. The Pelican cases are incredibly important for our productions. The reason why it's made our jobs a whole lot easier is it is essentially the storage, the security. It's also just a great way to organize and transport your gear. Okay, moving on, the Hollyland Cosmo C1 transmission kit. These are essentially wireless transmitters. And the reason why I'm bringing up a wireless transmitter as something that makes our job easier is because we shoot with a cinema camera and we don't have a flippy screen, we don't have autofocus, you don't want to have to always go back and forth looking at your monitor, running back, turning up your light. You want to be able to stand behind your monitor with your lights set on the Sidus Link app, dialing in all of your lights. These transmitters are also built like a tank. They're made out of metal and I'm never concerned about the durability. Not only that, but they're pretty reliable. I've had pretty good results. I would say eight out of 10 on transmission reliability. 
So distance to me and my use case has never been a problem. They've been pretty reliable and consistent. Another great thing about the Hollyland Cosmo C1s is the ability to split SDI and HDMI. So for example, you can go into an HDMI monitor like I'm doing right now, and then the transmitter communicates with the receiver on the back of my camera that is going from SDI into the camera. Probably the biggest feature and the reason why I have the Hollyland Cosmo C1s on my list is the ability to transmit to my monitor while doing YouTube talking heads. It actually transmits a very nice 1080p signal and I'm not going back to the editing station and uh, my whole talking head was out of focus. So that's really nice and a true lifesaver. Another piece of equipment that goes hand in hand with the Holly Cosmo C1 is the Oculus Nano. This little focus module has been used quite a bit. So mainly what I use the Nucleus Nano for are again for my YouTube talking heads. And I'll essentially just dial in my focus and just uh, make sure that again, I'm not going back after filming for an hour and everything was out of focus. So this is really nice to have setting up a nice little focus module and a transmission system has made my job a whole lot easier. I have to throw this guy in there as the last piece of equipment that I'm gonna talk about. There's a couple reasons why. Before I talk about this, please, please don't jump in the comment section and bash me. Man, you know, you're just, you, we're, not everybody can buy a red, man. You know, blah, blah, blah. You shoot red, that's, camera sucks, man. It's actually a Nikon. Like, I get it. There's quite a bit of people out there that dislike red cameras. Anytime you see one, you think, you know, we got a million bucks in the bank. Man, you can find a good used DSMC2 model. We have the Scarlet model. You could find a great deal for less than 5K. Most of you guys out there have a Sony camera that's way more than that. But anyways, I digress. I'm mainly adding this into the list, not specifically for the RED cameras, but specifically for cinema cameras. And I preface this by saying this is very specific but just like in the title of this video, these pieces of gear and pieces of equipment are designed for filmmakers. If you are constantly doing long interviews, um, long days on set, you know, bigger productions that require more attachments and focus modules and transmissions, and you're working with a bigger crew, I have to encourage you to look and invest in a camera something that has SDI, something that has reliable media, something that has reliable battery life, all of those factors are going to make your job easier. As I personally know and have experienced multiple occasions where my SD cards were crapping out and they were giving me right errors or I didn't have enough storage on my smaller SD cards or I didn't have enough battery life. My camera got overheated. I'm setting up all kinds of cables and dongles just to get my image to a monitor. Once you make that jump to a reliable cinema camera, you'll start seeing the benefits, especially if you are doing those types of projects where there's longer interview takes, there's just longer days on set, and you're working with medium to larger crew. That's it, guys. That is the list. I would love to hear your thoughts. Please drop your suggestions in the comment section down below. Let us know what type of gear you feel vital to your productions. We'd love to hear about it. And I'll put a link to all of the pieces of gear that I discussed in this video in the description down below, including some of the videos that I mentioned that you guys can go and check out. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. And just like always, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.